And welcome to the September 5th, 2023 Select Board meeting. The uh, <laughs> board is here minus Linda. We have the town manager, town clerk, members of the public, town assessor, recreation director. Um, let us stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right, first we have the approval of our meeting minutes from August 15th. Reviewed the minutes and make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Minutes approved. Next, we have our first public comment. Does any member of the public wish to make a comment? I do. Stand in the microphone. State your name and address, please. My name is Larry Rundell. I live at 23 Black Bay Hill Road. I'd just like to enlighten the uh, selectmen a little bit. Two weeks ago, I tried to get a hold of our road commissioner, Jody, and I left him a voice message with no response. After two, in, after a week, I left him another one. So I left him another one this morning. I was parked right out front. He was sitting in his office. All I wanted to know was what roads are being hot top. And in the past, me and Jody have gotten into it. I'm a little hothead, but, and then I end up getting a hold of James, and I get on to James, and I don't like to be like this. And it shouldn't have to be like this. That man is not answering his calls. I'm hearing it from everybody in town. So I'm here to tell the selectmen because someone ain't doing nothing about it. And the town people are fed up. He's supposed to be out inspecting all these jobs you're getting bad reports about, and he don't go out. That's his job. And all we're asking is to have him do his job. So, on another note, I have a question. I don't know if I can get an answer tonight or not, but seeing you got people, or we're going to have people from the edge here, I have a question. Last winter, the parking lot over here on Wilton and Sullivan Street was being plowed by the town of Berwick. Well, a private contractor was down plowing the water department at 300 bucks a whack. I'm the one that was plowing it, so this isn't hearsay. So I got a hold of someone from the edge. They lease that to the main DOT. So my question is, and I don't know that I can get an answer tonight, but I want an answer, what's the gig? We get nothing out of that. Well, we're paying 300 bucks a whack to go in the water department. Sounds like a little bit of foolishness. And I'm not sure you people knew about it. That's why I'm here. So I don't know what it's going to take. Maybe not tonight, but someone's going to give me an answer. I want to know who set this deal up. So you point me in the right direction. I'll take one or two weeks or I'll be back. Townspeople have had it. And I'm their voice. And that, and. You know, people call me a hothead. I don't care what they call me. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Um, I would uh, uh, thank you for your comments. I appreciate them, and we will look into that and make sure that. So, who do I get hold of to get the, an answer to that? The water department. No, has, this was before the water department. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm answer, I mean, I can't say to your other comment, but in terms of the water department, um, they control their own facility and plowing, correct? I mean, they. It's not the town facilities doing that, right? Uh, in that time, the town set up the plowing. We had a, um, at that point, they have access to the plow truck during a snowstorm, so it was arranged okay. for LaPierre to. I, I can't hear him. I'm hard of hearing. Oh, I mean, as you know, the at that at that point, the, the town was in charge of the water department, and it was arranged for. Lapierre to plow during a snowstorm. That um, was before they took over. Correct. Okay. All I want to know is it going to happen again? We get no revenue from plowing that. You got two trucks over there, which is a waste of time. It takes some hours. If you had the right piece of equipment, you could do that in 15 minutes. We, we are getting no revenue from that, and we're paying 
$1,000 per storm, I plowed it. I plowed that all winter. And I'd like to know if someone made a bad decision or if there's something that people need to know what's going on. I'll do a little bit of, I'll do a little bit of research in, into it. I don't want to misspeak, but I... Well, you're the town manager. You should have an answer, shouldn't you? I mean... I would hope to think it would go through you or maybe the chairman of the board, but if I'm not getting an answer out of you two, something seemed a little off to me. If I, if I can comment for a minute, is this is a public comment. This is not back and forth. Is uh, This is not the time for this. I thought I'd get that here, but I, that's well, fine. No, no, Larry, Larry, it is, no, that's the way it's set up. Is This is the public comment. You give your comment. Give us the time to get you the answer. Okay. This is not a back and forth at this time. It's set up by the meetings as a public comment for you to come in and speak your piece. It's not for the back and forth. I know, and I agree. But people come here, they don't come here because they get no answers. They really don't. If, if, if you want to talk to the public, go out and talk to them. I talk, I'm not a bad guy, but I get so heated when I see either stupidity or people not getting back to me. Jody did not get back to me. I had to get a hold of him. And then I get heated with him. He's a nice guy. I don't like to be like that. James will do some research and get back to you on both your topics. You know, I'm sure he has your phone number, email address. He'll get back to you in a week or so. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right, uh, we'll close the public comment. We have no public hearings. We have a committee report from Envision Berwick, Jeremy Caston. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Um, well, as uh, I think many of you know, we had uh, our annual uh, festival, Bring Your Lawn Chairs to Sullivan Square, several weeks ago. Uh, it was, uh, I think, especially in light of the uh, everyone's nervousness about the weather this summer. We had a, a, a fantastic day weather-wise, just a little bit of drizzle as we were setting up, and then the uh, clouds parted, and we had great weather for the whole event. Um, I would say it was uh, very much a success. Uh, I think you know the sponsors, all um, you know, who were in attendance, had a great experience. The public was out in force. We had, you know, quite quite a crowd. And, um, you know, I think for all of our, our vendors, they did really well. And um, I think in some ways, most importantly, all of the departments that were there, you know, from, from the library to RAC to um, the Legion, um, they all had a fabulous experience and, and expressed a, a desire to, to see it continue to, to be, to flourish and, uh, and connect all of all of these departments and organizations and i think that that's that's a win for sure um i don't know i think i, I saw almost all of you there at one point or another so uh, I'm, i hope you had a good time um everything i've heard from folks is that they they found it to be uh, uh an authentic and um and and fun day um yeah i think i think that's about it i heard um that uh, that corner point i know you I think you have Jamie on later on this evening. Uh, I, I heard that it was, if, if not their best day, one of their best days ever. So, you know, we're working with uh, the run for Fox sake, which happens in the morning, which, you know, they're tied into. And then we do lawn chairs. And obviously they're, they're, the beer garden is set up in front of Corner Point. So that's, you know, exactly what we want is for local businesses to flourish and, and have, um, you know, more success and, and get people in the door who maybe haven't had had our local beer. So all of it was, uh, I think, A++ from, from what I'm hearing back from, from everyone I've talked to. Do you, have, do you guys have any questions or feedback? It was an amazing event. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for all the work that you did. It was amazing. I had a great time. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, just... Um... Two things. I, th I think one thing was multiple vendors sold out near the end, and that's yeah. e exactly what we want. You know, I, I think that's great for them. Um, how did you feel about the one day versus two? I, I think oh. personally, just what I looked at, and you could correct me if I'm wrong. I think we had more 
longevity of people staying there all day. I think where last year, I think with the two days, it's like, oh, I'll just come back later. And I think later didn't happen, or we got the bad weather on Sunday last year. So um, yeah. I, I think it seemed like a, a more longevity and, and well turnout all day. But that was my perception while I was down there. I mean, what did what did you guys feel? I, well, we have not. Uh, we meet later this week to go over to do our, our hot wash following the event and go, you know, point by point through what worked and what didn't and try to figure out how to create infrastructure so that this, you know, for five people, it becomes a full time job for five volunteers for, for the majority of our summer, really starting in the spring and, and late winter for me with fundraising. So we want to figure out how to um, build systems for this, hopefully, so that um, we can a little bit parse it out by committee so that it continues to be something we we fund from sponsors and is all volunteer driven but but you know for 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 us it's it's big but all that to say uh, we have talked about the food thing that it's come up a lot and um yeah it is good for, for it's good for the vendors it's not good for the you know my wife waited in line for an hour for food and you know, then got up there and there wasn't food. And I think a lot of people had that experience. And we we had encouraged all our food vendors to have extra, extra food because Happy Face Barbecue seems like they always sell out. And they brought more, you know, uh, is what we were told, but they still ran out. So expanding the food options so that our, our stalwart regular, you know, like Happy Face has been there the last two years, that they always do well, but that there are other options and there's the lines aren't so long. There's more food and it's there all the way up until the end for sure. And I, I agree. I think that the the one day, I mean, honestly, the one day made it possible for us to close the 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 entirety of Sullivan Square, basically. And I think that, that it changes the profile of the event so much right. that that to me makes it absolutely worth it. Yeah, I, I just want to comment also, Jeremy alluded to it, um, you know, this is the third year that done this, and basically it's the same five people every yep. year. And when Jeremy said it becomes a full-time job, it does become a full-time job for them. Um, and they do an amazing amount of work, um, and it's all volunteer. Um, I, I can foresee in the future where this grows enough so, like, similar to what the Children's Festival in Summersworth mm -hmm. or the Strawberry Festival is, uh, we may be looking at, you know, a more professional way of doing this, not with the volunteers, and that's something that we have to start talking about. But amazing time. I, I only got to spend an hour there as uh, I came for the last hour after all the food was gone. Um, but it was, I was surprised at how many people were still there at 7 o'clock. And uh, is congratulations and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. You also were the first person there in the morning with me. I don't know that. So. Yeah, well. But, uh, I don't have a wife either. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Anything else? Jeremy, they did a great job, as you always do. And I just hope they see it grow next year. Excellent. Me too. It's um, it is a really fun event to put on, and and pretty pretty neat to look out at so many people that I know and people that we don't know, and see neighbors who haven't seen each other for a long time reconnecting and just you know building building community in a in a world where we don't have as much I think interaction as as folks used to. I'm really proud of that. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jerry. Bye bye. All right, we have a department report from Josh Jones, Recreation Director. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Josh Jones, Works and Rec Director. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Uh, just wanted to do a post um, summer camp check in. I got my dates mixed up on the uh, meeting, so I was, wanted to do this a couple weeks ago, but I messed up the first and third and second and fourth. So um, I felt like it was a very successful first summer camp for the rec program myself and shannon running it um I, i'd like feedback from you all good bad and ugly if you have it uh, we kept it what we considered kind of a basic uh, two field trips a week uh, every other day was at the memorial field we had some weather issues just like everybody else did in the beginning uh, we had access to the knowlton school um, we got burned near the end when they were redoing their gyms had to come up here 
Um, luckily, we had some good staff involved. We kept the kids quiet, but we did have to come during operating hours one day. Um, we had 147 kids registered. I probably memorized 100 names. And at lawn chairs, I ran into three of the kids whose names I did remember, which was good for <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'd love some feedback if you have anything, if you heard anything from the public about our summer camp, um, ways to improve it or anything like that. I think the best compliment I can say is that I've heard no complaints. I was yeah. just about to say it was um, very quiet from concerns. Yeah, I so. didn't see any Facebook posts, didn't receive any emails, didn't get any phone calls, no angry parents or anything like that, people saying anything negative about what was going on, which is, to me, means things ran very smoothly because yeah typically you get that sort of thing in the in a summertime you know yeah. especially in a you know five day a week program that runs yeah. for six weeks in the summer you get that sort of thing yeah you know but um i didn't receive anything like that so to me that means you did a pretty stellar job and um and i wouldn't worry about remembering the other 47 kids names <laughs> i used to work at a summer camp 250 kids a week every kid thought i knew their name yep Every year they'd come back and be like, can you remember me? I'm like, absolutely not. I see a thousand kids a summer. You think I remember you? And they just you remember the bad ones. Yeah, you don't want me to remember your name. That's the truth. Certainly you don't remember, remember those. Remember the bad ones. So I wouldn't hold that against you. But yeah, um, I heard nothing negative at all. I didn't find anything negative. So that means things must have run pretty smoothly from, from That's great. at least from our point of view, it ran yeah. pretty smoothly. From your point of view, you might have a different story to tell. I, I mean, we had our hiccups with kids. We had to excuse one kid from camp just for behavior issues. We had a behavior matrix from the get-go, and uh, we held pretty tight to it. Parents understood it. The, the, the parent involved with this situation didn't argue with us about it. It was multiple uh, incidences, and we just had, were able to point to the, you know, where the, the, the table goes this way and the table goes this way, and sorry, you're excused for the rest of the camp. So very black and white, no gray area with that, which I think was effective. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was great. We're just gonna expand it. I think we're gonna do our adventure camp a little bit bigger next year. Awesome. The older kids, they got bored being up at the field with not a whole lot to do. And everybody went to the same um, field trips. So we're looking at doing something different for the older kids and kind of bringing a little bit more excitement for that age group. Um, we're gonna change some field trips. We're not gonna do some field trips. Like the baseball game was hot with a bunch of kindergartners and first graders that don't care. That was, that was, that was a rough day. Um, I can believe you on that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, one of the directors, Taina, it was her 21st birthday the day before. She got to throw out the first pitch. Oh, that's so cool. So that was a good moment for her. Um, but, yeah, overall, that's great. No news is good news. Yeah, so. in, in this situation, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Any, Any other th comments? No. Um, it, just for the general public is what's coming up at the field now. That's, we're we're, we're yeah. working on I know the, they got the retaining wall in, uh, the – Playground equipment has been delivered. Yep, we have it all. That's my next update was going to be on what's going on up there. Retaining walls done. Uh, we got a little bit of fine grading left to do on that court. We got a little bit of an expansion to do uh, with the with the new survey that we had, um, or with the new survey that we have. We just weren't able to get the dimensions exact. So we got a little bit of cleaning up to do on the tennis court, and then we've got a little bit of cleaning up to do with moving the basketball goals to their proper, correct locations. Got to expand it kind of back to the northeast a little bit to get it to fit into the professional rectangle that it, it needs to be in. Um, tomorrow, they should get back to work on the playground footprint. That should be a two-day job. And then hopefully we'll hear from that playground company that they've got a crew ready. So we're everything's coming together. Got a little bit uh, tweaking of things to do to make everything fit. And then we just need crews available to do their jobs. But we're, we should should have it all done very soon. <laughs> so. Anything else? That's all I got. Thank you. Thank all you right. very much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you all. Appreciate Good night. <clears throat> Next, we have a department report from Jess Plant, Fire Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I was asked to come to the board tonight and give you an update on our uh, evacuation warming shelter um, policy that our guidelines that we're going to implement for the town of Berwick. I believe you have a copy of that in front of you at this point. Um, yep. This is basically just the stat. I think it's pretty reasonable. I think it will be easy to implement 
Um, my first goal was to try to get uh, one of my uh, full-time captains into the emergency management field. That hasn't worked out so great at this point, but I'm still working on that. That will that will come around with time. Yeah. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is that I've had a couple of volunteers come forward and want to get involved with emergency management, and I'm always open for for assistance. Um, Lisa Hustis has volunteered her time to set up and establish. Um, to be the uh, director of the management shelter, uh, to include warming, cooling, as well as the evacuation uh, shelter, if we need to do that. We're in the process of taking the county shelter plan and, and reducing it down to meet Berwick's needs, which is also taking some time, but we're getting there. Um, we've gone out and we've purchased uh, some cots with the funding that you provided through the budget process. We've purchased some blankets, some basic necessities that we will need should we have to open up a shelter. Um, How much do we have? Uh, uh, but we do have it at this point. How many do we, how many cots do we have? We, we purchased 50 right now. That's a, that's a good number. Well, it's a start. We had zero before. Exactly. That's With the funding that you had provided, we're working in that direction. And it, it will grow. Um, hopefully, we never need it. But if we do, it will be there and ready to go. So the, the guideline is just a guideline. It gives us and you an idea of what's going to take place and, and who's going to make those decisions. Where we're going to hold the warming shelter is still be left up to the town manager and myself at this point, uh, wherever it works. You know, last year, you know that the library worked because they had power, but that could change. So we're, we're in the process of redoing and looking at that whole another area of uh, emergency management. Are there any questions for the chief? Yeah, I have I have a few. Um, hey, Chief, is uh, the the carts and blankets and things? Uh, what are you doing to store those? Right now, they're here at the station. What I've been trying to do, and I think it would be reasonable, is to try to locate um, a small enclosed trailer that we could leave that stuff in twenty four seven. And if we needed to haul it to the town hall, or we needed to take it to the high school wherever we would be able to quickly have everything in one spot and transport it. Are you talking about uh, the type of trailer that just fits on like a regular truck? Uh, we're, looking, we're looking at something I can store it in year round. So if we're going to do that, it needs to be something like a small enclosed trailer, maybe an eight by five, five by eight, that you can put all this equipment into. Uh, right now, like I said, we have cots, we have blankets, we have pillows. And we have quite a bit of supplies for signage, that type of thing that, that it, you need to keep all in one place. So that, that's what we're looking at right now, Tom. Thank you. Was that from Okay. Uh, Chief, so Linda sent the question in, and I'm just kind of looking at it. And you, you kind of alluded to it that it, it sounded like before you had the captain lined up to kind of be that point person, and that didn't work out. Um, so would that be... Lisa Houston, then with her volunteering kind of being that point person underneath you as far as where we're at for fall and winter season planning. I think there's just some concern that if we need to open up a warming shelter or if we have, you know, multiple days without power like we did last year, um, who do we know is who's going to be planning and getting that information out to the residents? Correct. Right now, Lisa Houston would be that contact. She doesn't want to do it forever. Mm -hmm. I don't want her to do it forever. Until I can get somebody else up and board, she's offered to step up and, and be the uh, shelter manager, if you will. If you look at the definitions, we have a shelter manager, we have a shelter coordinator. Uh, basically, the coordinator is the person that's in charge of that facility, and Lisa would work with them in order to do what needed to get done at this point in time. But like I said, this is only, I say temporary, but... The goal is to get one of my people on board to be able to do this down the road. It, it just hasn't worked out. As you know, we had a, a 
upgrade in our management record system last year, and we're still trying to get through this whole process. So, excellent. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief? No. All set. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Really appreciate you taking the time to come on here and give us the update. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Um, do we need to vote on this policy, or is this just more of just in place at will? Oh, it's a guideline. Um, I think it falls under the York County one that he presented yep. last year, and I think you just kind of put their guides to what what the time what, is. Yeah, yeah. What what his? Well, the chief did say that this is just the start too. So yeah. There's, uh, I don't think they're ready, really ready to. Uh, Put it on prime time, maybe. <laughs> we can find out for you. All right. No rush. I don't see any snow this week. <laughs> don't <laughs> jinx us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 90 oh. degrees, the snow storm. Yeah. 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 Wait till next week. <laughs> How is it snowing and lightning at the same time? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next, appointments. Um, we have Amber Fecto uh, wanting to be appointed as an alternate member for the Recreation Committee. Please, come forward name, address, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Amber Fecto. I live at 266 Cranberry Meadow Road. Um, I've been a resident of Berwick for over 25 years. I'm a funds administrator at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. So that's, you know, that's the boring stuff. But I have a background in early childhood education. More importantly, I am raising my children in Berwick. They're going through the rec department, through the school system, and we have a, you know, I have a stake in the in the situation, um, my oldest has made her way through the rec department, through the various um, activities, and now my youngest is going through it. And I'm just really excited to see this transition uh, with Josh being on board and the growth that's going to happen. And I'm excited to volunteer and play a role in it. Terrific. Um, does anyone have any questions for, for Amber? I don't. We're always <laughs> very happy for volunteers. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, we always appreciate when people actually come out to fill in the, the vacancies. Sometimes nobody shows up for quite some time. <laughs> some gaps there. So thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely happy that you have some connection to the rec department. You have, you know, kids in the program, so that makes it easier for, you know, you actually have. A, Skin in the game. You're not yeah. just, you know, sideline. Um, do you have any special skills that you think you could bring to the program? Um, I, I'm really motivated, uh, organized, and I just I see a value in the development of children and uh, providing a safe place for them to grow and thrive. Um, summer camp, for example, just seeing my children go through it, it's been incredible to see the experiences and friendships that they've been able to build. And um, it's just, it's important to me because of that. Yeah, the festival just showed us how many young families there are. So that's exciting. Yeah. I was impressed. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> and more to come. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to appoint Amber Fecto to the Recreation Commission as an alternate member for the term of one year. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Welcome aboard. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, we have um, Sherry Clement, who uh, is an alternate member, is uh, meant to be uh, promoted to a regular member, as we had a mem regular member have their term expire. Um, so I'll make the motion that we promote Sherry Clement from alternate member to regular member on the Recreation Committee with a term expiring December 2025. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? She'll be happy. <laughs> um, we have no unfinished business. Town manager's report. So part of Old Pine Hill Road South, Pine Hill and New Dam are on the list for this year. And there's some other projects. Um, there's just weather and contract, contractor availability. For pavement. 
for being incorrect. Yes. Thank you. Um, for Pine Hill, I'm sure you've seen the those squares that are cut on the road. Those are gate valves that need to be raised in anticipation of the paving. Uh, once they were in the road, they found that there were several that needed special order sleeves and risers to ensure that the uh, gate valves were put in properly. Um, so that's that's the update on, on, on paving. Do they have an expected date of when they're going to start? For Old Pine Hill Road South right now, it's on the calendar for September 15th. Also, um, with the edge development, Edgeway is the street that is across from the police station entrance where they put in the uh, pipe where there's the depression in the road. Yep. They will be tying that part of Wilson Street into Edgeway so that dip will go away and that is scheduled to start next week. Okay. I have an up yeah, go ahead. Oh, just uh, I have an update on the Route 4 safety study and implementation. I'm in talks with uh, CACS, which is our MPO organization we're in with York, Kittery, South Berwick, Elliott, and more coming soon. Kenny Bunk's being added to that, and Algonquin's being added to it. We're going to stop fighting with the big company? Yeah. Sure <laughs> more. Uh, CAC's been supportive, and we're working with DOT to work on a, it's uh, called a business partnership initiative. And part of this project will get a left and right turn lane into Blackberry Hill Road. And we'll also provide some median islands to protect those turn lanes. And also get a turn lane into the future gas station if it ever gets built. Gets built. Also, uh, Kind Farms and Pond Road. So that's all. Turn you know, lanes with medians for all of it? Yeah. I mean, for all those buildings? Yeah, and all of it. Um, working with them to ensure the town should only be on the hook for the Blackberry Hill Road part. Um, so working on that, DOT funds a third of it. And as it develops with the cost shares and exact exact information, I will provide that back to the board when I have it. I am meeting with um, HUD in DC to go over our earmark funding. That's the $3.142 million uh, grant fund we were awarded about two years ago. Um, hopefully, we're going to see that in our bank account soon so we can start some of our projects. One of the main uh, projects, it's supplemental funding for our drainage project that gets the, just like the, the project that did um, in Wilson Street to get to the edge and the up, upsize it all the way through, we're going to pick up at the edge and get to the Salmon Falls River. Um, so some of that funding will go towards that project. Once, uh, as that project's happening, we're going to get some essential infrastructure to bring the utilities underground around the edge. Um, also, plan is some work along Sullivan Street. So some street work for Sullivan Street, drainage if we need it, but most importantly probably is new sidewalks along Sullivan Street to get to the Jordan Wilson Sullivan intersection. Um, last up update I have is TC Hafford has completed the boiler room project. So we'll no longer have standing water in there when it rains. Um, and Jody's, uh, they had to tear up the stairs, so Jody will be working on replacing those stairs as soon as possible. The stairs into the boiler, into the boiler room. Yep. yep. And that completes my report. Um, not in your town manager report, but I had a question. What do you remember with our MS4 project? That, the MS4 project is um, hopefully fully funded through a grant. We have a $1.4 million grant. Um, it's our engineers working on bid documents, so that project should be going with the bid soon. It went through planning board, so it's fully approved and permitted through planning board and all that. Sure, well, I just remember seeing that. documents about it, I think, six years ago now, and uh, five, six years ago, and I was waiting to see. I mean, I, last time I remembered, like, oh, they're like, you have to have this done within a year. And we're like, we'll have to put that on hold, and then and yeah. now five years later, it's still not quite we're done We're able yet. to, as long as we're showing a good faith effort towards it, but now it, it is, uh, we, like I said, it's a $1.4 million grant. 
that hopefully will fund um, the thing about this project that it, it can be broken up into good phases yeah. so if we only have partial of the partial amount of the project we'll still be able to do a lot of the work yeah. and tie into it later yeah the project the project you're talking about is the uh, Bolton Street right yep. yeah and that the, the, that eventually will that because of all the underground drainage goes all the way up through second street and first street all the way up to uh, Copeland Copeland yep. up that way right yep. right and it it establishes a, a brand new sidewalk and parking along a 2.7 acre parcel that's been envisioned as Great Falls Park. It also um, it includes a, a bunch of landscaping in there to really. Well, yeah, that, that that's that's what I remember. I remember the last planning documents that I saw. It looked like it was going to be really nice when it was done, and it just seemed like we hadn't talked about it for a while. So, you know, trudging along. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody said this business was going to be fast. Nobody ever said the okay, government no. worked at the speed of light. Um, all right, uh, slick board communications. Yeah, I, I have one more oh. question. Um, the chairlift, yeah, do we have any date on certification or anything with that? No, they're still working on some problems with it. Okay. But it's in there. It's in. It's, it's, in. Just it's not piece. operational yet. So. It'll be ready for the June election. <laughs> Next year. Hopefully June. November. We'll Don't get Patty going. <laughs> I know. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> June 2026. Uh, all right, select board communications. Um, oh, I had a notice from uh, Coast Bus Services that the uh, they going forward the route northbound route and the southbound route. Um, we're going to have suspension of service on Saturdays, and that's going forward until further notice, I believe. Right. There's a shortage of bus drivers yeah. again, and uh, so yeah, it, it's just a temporary, you no, know, shutdown, and hopefully in the not too distant future they'll be able to uh, pick up some more personnel and get going on that again. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard, it's hard, hard on everybody. Yeah, it, it, no, they they they. Like like the school departments, like every other place is, is trying to find drivers. Oh yeah, no, I see I see posted once in a while like, oh this bus doesn't have a driver, you gotta come pick up your kids. It's rough. So more people want to become bus drivers, now's the time. Um, approval of accounts payable. All right. All right. All right, so we have a payroll warrant number 12 from August 24th, 2023 in the amount of $86,069.64. We have a payroll warrant number 13 from August 31st, 2023 in the amount of $80,613.01. We have an accounts payable warrant number 14 in the amount of $689,608 and 43 cents and payroll warrant number 15 from September 7th in the amount of $78,378 and 67 cents. I make a motion that we pay all our bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid. All right, new business. Um, our tax commitment. Paul, hi. Look here, what are you there? <laughs> He's ready. He's ready to go home. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, it was there a few weeks ago when uh, we got approved for a um, an overlay of $37,386. We did the extract into the tax billing system. We found some errors, discrepancies. Um, James and Lisa did a, a lot of work to get this thing prepared because of the, a lot of the problems were with the um, tax stabilization program that didn't come over properly. Yeah. Uh, luckily, this is gonna be the only year that'll, you know, that'll be in effect, so. Um, <clears throat> so one of the, the it, at first we added to the value because we, I found a property that was not being uh, calculated in the vision system. So it added a couple hundred thousand dollars to the uh, tax roll. And then today I found another problem which 
where there was an exempt property that was being taxed that shouldn't be taxed, which was a little more money than that, so it actually took away from the from the tax roll. So um, I'm looking to get a an approval for a decrease in the overlay from thirty seven thousand three hundred and eighty six dollars to thirty four thousand seven hundred and thirty seven dollars and fifty two cents. There's no change in the tax rate. Um, you know, the tax rate wasn't affected. It remains at 1832. Are there any questions for the assessor? I'll make a motion to amend the 2023 tax commitment to uh, <clears throat> go with the new overlay amount of $34,737.52. A second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yeah, if I could make one other, I'm beginning a lot of people coming in and calling regarding this tax stabilization program and, um, you know, telling me that it's been rescinded. There is a new tax fairness credit program that's being administered by the state. Um, as far as I know right now, you have to make less than $80,000 per year and you can't have more than $150,000 in assets. But they will reimburse you $2,000 towards your tax bill. Um, and a lot of people have been coming in. As soon as I get more information, I'll put something on the website or get some you know, information out there to the public. But I think this is a much better program. It'll certainly help the people that need it. You know, that need it. And um, as I said, it's very limited information what I have right now, but I'll, get, I'll have more coming forward. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. All right. We have gener generator bid results. We had one bid from Electrical Systems of Maine for Town Hall. The total amount is sixty-seven thousand five hundred, and for the Public Works facility is eighty thousand seven hundred twenty-five. These are both um, affordable. For what we've budgeted and what we have in reserves. I'm looking for a motion to approve the bid and give me permission to engage the contractor to work on our contract. How much did we allot for this uh, particular project? For the for the town hall, we allotted over um, exactly $150,000. So we have, should have plenty for town hall. And then for public works, we need to use... Um, some of the public works uh, facility improvement funds. Yeah, there's, improvement. there's enough in there to get public works um, set for the future. Any other questions? Um, is uh, one for the town hall, we need to do some upgrades to the electrical system still. Um, we have money in the budget for that? We have we have um it's about fifty thousand dollars so we have the hundred and fifty thousand dollars which covers the cost of the generator and then anything that uh, you know above the sixty seven five can go to those electrical and there's another fifty thousand right yeah okay i know we had figured prints. into yeah. it no to to because we've got to do the new supply line into the building yeah. from the pole so. Yeah, there's still quite a bit of electrical work. But we're also trying to get rid of the pole. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have a general question. What would a miscellaneous <clears throat> direct expense be? Excuse me. Just curious. What would it be? I don't know. I can get back to you on that. It would have to be itemized in their actual bill, though, right? I can't just say miscellaneous in their actual final stuff. Yeah, and they, yeah, they, they would have to tell us, right? Yes. If they put MISC down <laughs> at $7,000, I'm going to be, I'm going to have some questions. Well, I want exactly. Some, yes. I want some receipts <laughs> that say MISC on them. So I'll make the motion that we approve the bid for the generator for Town Hall and the generator for Public Works at Sixty-seven thousand five hundred and eighty thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars, uh, respectively. No second there. Any further discussion? And authorize the town manager 
and authorize the contract. And authorize the town manager to sign the contract. I'll amend my second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Glad somebody came in under budget for once. Yeah, I'm surprised that James <laughs> showed that to me. I... <laughs> uh, all right, and the Corner Point Brewing is looking to renew their state liquor license. Part James, of their no complaints. Annual, <laughs> annual license. Priest seems almost identical. To yeah, one. I, I, I was looking over, and you no, know, other than a few uh, items changed as far as. Uh, Prices and stuff, income. I don't see anything different from anything. And any any issues with police, fire, and brawls in the streets. I mean, one of the concerns from last the last year was just the people going rogue and crossing the street. And the crossing and the, their main entrance is a little safer. Yeah, because right. mm -hmm. okay. they moved it right. Yeah, I'd say parking is still an issue, but that's not something that. You know, as they say, it's on a this list. Good problem to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. we gotta we gotta get like a bike path in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion that we renew Corner Point liquor license for one year. A second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Jamie will be very happy. All right. Um, we have an updated personnel policy, but I've been asked to table that for tonight um, just because they're still crossing some T's and dotting some I's, and hopefully we'll get an update on that next meeting or the meeting after. Um, all right. We have no quick land deeds, no abatements. Second public comment. All right. I will close second public comment. All right, we have an executive session for the discussion of personnel, so we will be ending the public part of the meeting. We won't make, be making any decisions, so we'll be coming back. Is there any other business, non-agenda items anybody wishes to discuss? Yeah. I'll just take a minute to, again, thank Envision Berwick for putting on the lawn chairs. They did a great job as they, they put a lot of work into it, and it's... Uh, it's great to see that come to come together, and uh, can't wait to see next year. I make a motion that we enter executive Nine. session under Title One Four Zero Five Six A for the discussion of personnel. Second. All those in favor? Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.